But her successor called her up and said, in, in that following October, and she said, Becky, I feel like I've died and gone to, to school heaven. This PLC, PLC thing is amazing. The teams are so self-directed, they've already looked at their state assessment results, they've set smart goals for themselves, they've already started to implement the curriculum, they've made some changes based on the results. They're changing some of their instructional strategies. We've already administered common assessments. We've analyzed the data at the team level. Teams are making adjustments. We've got this wonderful system of intervention that's giving kids extra time and support. This is PLC heaven. It's as good as it gets. Well, they didn't go from a very traditional elementary school to PLC heaven all at once. In fact, there were seven steps that school had to take, and any school has to take, in order to become a high-performing PLC. One might say you have to build a stairway to heaven. There's a lady who knows all that glitters. All right, so we're going to move on. Now that I performed in Seattle, <laughs> add that to my resume. And I'm going to give you all seven steps on the stairway to PLC heaven, but it won't do me any good to give you those seven steps unless you embrace this next statement as true. So here we go. This is important. I'm going to ask you to take a note. Write this down. It could be on the test. Collaboration by invitation won't work. You will never build a high-performing professional learning community if people can opt out of the collaborative process. You can't just invite them, encourage them, make it possible for them to collaborate. This is not a field of dreams. It's not if you build it, they will come. You have to actually insist that collaboration is going to be a part of the culture, so it's going to be tight. And we're going to embed collaboration in the routine practices of the school. Now, what does that mean? You know how sometimes I schedule you to teach your four-hour algebra class, and then I schedule you to have lunch fifth period, and I schedule you to supervise the study hall sixth period? Well, I'm going to schedule you every week to meet with your collaborative team. And you wouldn't think of missing that team meeting any more than you would not think of showing up to your fourth hour English class. You're assigned, it's part of your regular work routine, it's embedded in the, in the standard work that we do. But if I'm going to assign you to a team, we also have to make sure that it's a meaningful team, not an artificial team. We've seen principals create what we call artificial teams. Everybody's assigned to a team, but I have a dance instructor, a music uh, um, teacher, and an auto mechanics teacher left over. And the principal says, all right, you three be a team. To do what? Sing and dance their way through auto mechanics? You know, I, I, so yes, we want everybody to be a, a member of a team, but it's got to be a relevant, meaningful team, not an artificial team. So the fundamental question what is the difference between an artificial and irrelevant team is simply comes down to this. Do the members of this team have a shared responsibility for exploring those four critical questions? What is it we want our kids to learn? How do we know if they're learning? What do we do when they don't learn? How can we enrich if they already have it? So what are some possible team structures that make sense? Let's say I'm teaching fourth grade in my elementary school. What might be the best possible team structure for me? Who should I be a member? What, what, what would my team be? I'm looking for choral response. Who should, who's my team? Other fourth grade teachers, right? Not a trick question. This is easy. Um, I teach biology at the high school. Who's my team? Biology teachers. I'm in a really small school. There's only one kindergarten, one first grade, one second grade. I can't be a member of a team. Oh, yes, you can. We'll make it a vertical team. Now, that vertical team, the three of you, will be responsible for the primary program. All three of you will work together to make it a world-class program. You're going to agree on what kids, the three of you have to agree on what kids should learn in kindergarten, first grade, second grade. The three of you will create assessments to monitor your kids as they move through the primary program. And when that first grade teacher is looking at the results from one of those assessments, She's got two critical friends looking at the results with her, the kindergarten teacher and second grade teacher. Vertical teams can certainly work, but not always. We had a German teacher in our school, only German teacher in the school, only German teacher in the county. So when it came time to assign her to a team, we could have said, well, sit in on Spanish, it's foreign language, that's close enough. 
but we wanted her to work with other German teachers. We went to the American Association of Teachers of German, we explained what we wanted, and they helped us create a four-member team. Now, her teammates were in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, and Orlando, but they met every week. When a Spanish team at Stevenson met, they met face-to-face. -face. When the German team met, they met using the technology. But they did all the same things that the Spanish team did. They agreed on what kids should learn in German one, on pacing. They agreed on the common assessments. They worked together to create them. They shared the results with each other. They helped each other become better teachers of German. Think of the technology that's available right now. Right now, for any teacher who wants to be a member of a collaborative team. There's voice threads, there's video threads, there's Google Docs where you can share your documents back and forth with each other and edit them and send them back and forth. There's Skype and iChat where you can have see you, see me conversations. I think Skype set it up now so that you could be having an a, a, a audio meeting with 24 different people at the same time. We're not advocating for a team of 24, but I mean, four or five of you could certainly be a member of a team and meet on a weekly basis using Skype.